Hey everybody, it's Dr. McBerry here, and today we're going to continue on with our video series on teaching reading comprehension in the elementary classroom. And in our last uh, video, I went over what I would expect in a basic lesson plan if I was developing a lesson plan on um, text-based um, analysis, on text-based discussions, on teaching um, readers workshop that included a mini lesson on different comprehension strategy instruction techniques. So those are just some of the ideas to make it happen, but what do we mean when we say assessing reading comprehension? And to do that, I thought we should just basically do a review on some of the kinds of assessments you would see in a early childhood and elementary education classroom. Um, and often we have the you know, screening assessments. What do we mean by a screening assessment? Well, you're looking for something. So this could be a kindergarten readiness placement. This could be um, maybe a teacher, maybe you noticed some, um, some issues with a way a child was decoding in third grade. Um, and there's just, you know, just you don't know, you just have like an instinct that you're screening them to see if they might need additional supports. And then, so that is, you know, is something needed? The diagnostic set assessments is more what is needed. And these are, we'll talk about in a, set, um, in a, in a second, more norm reference tests um, that you're looking and comparing a student against a sample and trying to decide, are they too far away from the mean that would indicate that they need kind of additional support. So those screening and diagnostic assessments are used often in early childhood classrooms, um, often in with students who have um, special education services uh, by law because they have an um, IEP. Um, and so as a reading teacher, you know, you might need and might even administer some of those classes, especially if you're cross endorsed as a special education teacher. We're also very familiar with kind of like outcome based assessments. And there you're looking at, you know, did, did something happen? Is this a, you know, you, you taught something. And you're trying to see if, you know, did they learn? Um, so you get a lot of idea of those idea of uh, outcome based assessments and work, you know, in assessments like progress monitor. Um, and both of these are often used kind of in the classroom a lot. And we're going to really pull those apart and think about them in a reading comprehension kind of classroom. Uh, progress monitoring, you know, seeing are your students doing better, um, and really focusing in on two types of assessments there. Now, you can look at formative and summative assessments. Now, truly, when we're talking about reading comprehension, you know, I'm very suspect of those summative reading comprehension tests. This is why they, there are commercial products out there, but they're very expensive to do. And it's not like they tell you exactly what you need to fix. Because remember what we talked about with our um, with our assessments. But before we do that, let me cover the difference between summative and formative tests. Formatives, you know, those are context dependent. You, they're in situ while you're teaching, and you might say that this is how like you would identify what kind of strategies you might need, because you notice that some of your students aren't really identifying key details in a paragraph. So using informal assessment techniques as a formative assessment, walking around and seeing that your students aren't underlying key details, you might use that data to inform your practice and teach a mini lesson on identifying key details. A summative assessment would be you gave them a passage and then you see how well did they identify, say, 80% of the key details. Or you know, you have some kind of criteria that is the outcome. Um, and that's, you know, versus this is more input and output. And then you have your high stake tests um, and then the, the progress monitoring tests like iReady that your school systems do. But when we're thinking about reading comprehension, a lot of it is going to be that kind of more formative assessment because you don't really know what somebody knows with reading comprehension. 
Uh, you might give them an essay at the end, but are you grading their writing? Or are you grading their ability to understand a text? So we have to really think about those principles and whether we're talking about formative or summative tests, you really need to be thinking about the idea of validity. And reliability. Now, validity is are you measuring what you say you're going to measure? Reliability is do you do it the same every time? So, a personal scale is a great example. If my scale is 10 pounds off, it's not that. But if it's 10 pounds off every time, it's reliable. So, you can be reliable and not valid. However, if that scale jumps 10 to 20 time pounds every time I get on it, it's not reliable. If it's not reliable, it can't be valid. So when you're thinking about the assessments, the amount of validity and reliability increases based on the amount of high stakes of the test. So they, they, and that also limits you. So when you think about the smarter balance tests, you can't measure things like motivation that we know have key indicators of, of reading. You can't measure dispositions, so you you do that to increase the reliability of and, and the fidelity and cheapness of the test too. Um, multiple choice comprehension questions are cheaper and easier to grade. So when you're thinking about you know those tests, when you get them, you always see like where they do those placements and say, oh, this person's at this percentage grade level or this grade level. That's a norm reference, and. These are often used, and you will see norm referencing for reading comprehension. Um, but really, what they're looking at is things summarizing skills, um, defining keywords with implicit and explicit details. But a norm reference reading comprehension text means that they've given it to a large population. So, and you know, this is where they're norming the test. And I'm oversimplifying it because this is just about reading comprehension as a in um, assessments. But you parents will ask you about these, and as teachers, you're going to need to know more about the norm reference tests. But it's it's basically you know where does that student fall, and how many standard deviations are they away from a mean, and that's a norm. And it's um, and they say okay, this is where a third grader should score that score that the test is norm for that specific score saying that's what third graders get. And you'll see those reading comprehension. But in a class, you know, you're thinking really with reading comprehension and really is formative assessments with reading comprehension. You'll be using, you might use comprehension. Now here's the thing, you use comprehension questions as a way to measure knowledge growth. Um, so they're interrelated, and we'll talk about that in a second. But with formative assessments in reading comprehension, it's still how do we teach it? Text based discussion. And text based analysis. Guess how we assess it? Text based discussion and text based analysis. Summative tests are not context dependent, they should be able to be used. You know, you do not want your prior knowledge influencing your story of text. Prior knowledge is essential, and understanding someone's prior knowledge is essential in formative um, assessments. So it involves you can do text-based discussions or uh, text-based analysis, meaning, you know, I can look at a student's annotations. I can look at, I can listen into a group have a text-based discussion and see are they are using evidence. Where do I get that evidence? We talked about writing those objectives from the Common Core State Standards, how you unpack those, and you look at the knowledge and the skills that are required at that grade level, and then you craft your objectives using that understanding of knowledge and skills. Um, and so those are really how you have to think about it when you're doing that. So what kind of assessment techniques can you use? Well, observation, teach your observations, exit slips. No observations. Exit slips. Portfolios. 
reflections. Now, reflections are huge um, when as a tool to assess reading comprehension because you're, you're forcing the student to be metacognitive about them applying that strategy. And if you think about what we said, now I can go back to why we see more of the diagnostic assessments in phonological awareness, phonics, and uh, phonemic awareness. It goes back to our classic iceberg, you know? Um, and the skills we can teach to automaticity, those strategies we teach, you can't, you don't, there is no master vocabulary list. There is no master list of texts that one must comprehend. Go back to Powell and Scar and Brown. They took those general thinking strategies. And that's why we see those larger effect sizes in uh, outcome assessments with students with special needs when we're teaching reading comprehension strategies and a lower ceiling when students have already mastered that strategy because it's a below the iceberg thing to measure. So it's harder to kind of measure those assessments. Um, and that's why while we do see those norm reference tests um, in reading comprehension, you won't really get that in like a classroom. But in a class, you know, you do see progress monitoring. Again, progress monitoring again is also more reliable and valid in domains of phonemic awareness fun in the skills. Um, it's easier to monitor that because we know that the, the way that we learn is pretty systematic. You're not you're not going to be substituting phonemes until you can identify phonemes. Yet you will be switching different ideas and thinking about kinds of different clues, your syntax clues, your semantic clues, um, when you're trying to figure out words. And then you, beyond, you might also just do the quickest thing and pull them apart and try to decode the word. Um, but all of those elements really influence progress monitoring. So how do you do progress monitoring with reading comprehension? Oftentimes that's where we might give students bookmarks um, and it might have them like, you know, reflect on when they use a skill. This involves again, a lot of executive functioning skills because, which isn't a bad thing to develop in elementary students, but if they had, you know, if they had to write down every time they use a strategy, um, that will help as well. Um, so that is one way that you can progress monitor. You can have your own notebook for when you sit in on text-based discussions. And you don't have to get crazy technical. One of my favorite apps to have is just a tally app. So if I had four students in a group, you know, I can just tally every time they use a piece of textual evidence that meets the objectives of the lesson. So that's one way I can do progress monitoring in reading comprehension. Um, and you use that data as a student to, to basically, you might think about how you want to group the students, maybe how you choose different texts, different text sets. All of this diagnostic, um, all of your formative data and your progress monitoring data should be used as by you as a teacher to inform what happens in um, your classroom. So you have to think about the content and the purpose of the assessment. That's why I always go from the objective I want you to go when you're writing those lesson plans, we stressed this in the last video, is to go from objective straight to your assessment. All right? That's how you design a lesson and you need to think. Will this assessment elicit evidence that I can say this objective has been met or not met? Your teaching then happens here as you scaffold the knowledge and skills they need to develop. That's the teaching part. But you don't know what to teach until you know exactly the kind of evidence you're gonna be looking for in assessments that is aligned to your objective that is pulled from the common course of standards. In a way, that's how you as a classroom teacher ensure and increase your validity of the lesson plan. But that's your, that's your tool to think about how do I, as a classroom teacher, increase validity? Well, you have a traceability in the depth and coverage of the common core state standard. And I can follow that from your assessment to your objective to the common core state standard. 
Um, and you really, that's how we build up our ideas of assessments in reading comprehension. All right, all.